Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Now I'll say right at the outset that today's 60 minute workout is another one that has the five minute warm up kind of rolled into that 60 minutes. So if you need to do any stretching or if you want to have a last minute drink, do it now while I'm going through describing the session because once we start, we ain't stopping for an hour, okay? So as to the hour itself. So we start off with a five minute warm up and then we go straight into 26 strokes per minute. Now my pace, I'm gonna go for 2K plus 15. And then every five minutes, I'm gonna go for 10 power strokes. Now you can do this whatever way you want. You can just use my beautiful dulcet tones to keep you company while you're rowing for an hour. But this is how I'm gonna row it, and it puts it round about mid, kind of you're getting towards kind of, I don't know, say three quarters of the mid scale. So we're kind of getting up to top, but we're still within the mid range. Those 10 power strokes are certainly gonna be what knocks it up towards the top. So anyway, we're gonna be doing all of that uh, basically 10 times, then we're gonna have a five minute cool down at the end. So five minute warm up, 50 minutes worth of rowing at 26 strokes a minute, and five minutes cool down. So you can follow me or you can just let my voice keep you company while you do whatever you wanna do for this hour ahead of you, okay? Now I'll probably be going over some old ground uh, topic wise while we're doing this, but I think there's a few things that we need to cover that some, maybe some of you haven't seen. So I'll go through technique, I'll go through a little bit about uh, diet, eating and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm sure I'll talk about movies and, and all that kind of stuff in the meantime. But anyway, hopefully I've waffled on more than long enough for you to do some whatever stretching you needed to do and have a last drink before we start. So let's get on with this and we'll start off by setting up our machine. So set your drag factor first. If you don't have any idea what drag factor is, then please watch the video. A link to it in the description. So go check it out. Make sure you know what drag factor is and where it's best for you to set it on the machine that you're currently using. Set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up at it and you don't have to look down at it and set the foot straps so they cover either the bottom lace on your shoe or if you're like me and rowing socks, they'll let you kind of hinge forward comfortably at the front without grabbing and binding up your toes. All right, I think I've really dragged this one on long enough. Are you ready for this? The counter's going down. It's telling you when we're about to start. So here we go then. We're going to start off with a warm up at around about 18 strokes a minute. We're not going to do the single leg stuff, but we're going to take it nice and easy for the first five minutes, okay? So here we go in three, two, one, let's go. We've got a whole hour ahead of us. Just think, you could be watching an episode of Breaking Bad or Luther or, I don't know, the A Team, something like that. But you chose to spend it with me. Thank you. <laughs> as much as I laugh, I mean, it does mean a lot that people watch these videos and row along with me and reply and all that kind of stuff. Can you imagine how tragic it would be if I was here punting out these videos all on my own? Nobody watched them. I'm here just talking to myself. <sighs> right, so as we approach, one minute gone. Hopefully any of the crackles in your body will have cleared up by now. And you'll start to feel a little bit more fluid. Your body's opening up a little bit more. You can kind of feel your shoulders going into a nice fluid in and out motion. Your knees are at a nice pace for sliding up and down the rail. Your heart rate monitor strap is digging into your side. Hang on. <laughs> is that any better? Seriously, I have no idea how you women out there wear brass straps. I can't even put up with a heart rate monitor strap. And as we approach the two minute mark, let's just start about, start to think about where the power is coming from. Remember, we're still in the warm up, so we're not going hard yet. Not particularly going hard in the main set, but bear with me. So just think about a good push with your legs, right from the front of the machine, just press it away from you. I kind of prefer press 
to push, but there's no real clear way to say that. But it's like a constant pressing motion or pressing power output. Push makes me think of like a shove, like one force. Whereas what I want you to do is feeling constant contact with the foot plate, pressing the machine away from you as you initiate your drive. So from the very beginning here, all the way to the very end here, you should feel as though you're connected to the machine. And if you've got a Concept 2 machine like me, or another machine that has a force curve display on it, you'll see that press by how constant you are in it, by how um, constant the curve is. I'm kind of trying to look at mine to see the best way to describe it, but you'll see that it rises up over a period of time, whereas if you just stabbed at the machine, it would be like a quick and then straight back down again. Right, so we're closing in on four minutes gone in this warm up. Just pulling along at 18 strokes a minute. Don't worry, I'll talk more technique as we get through this. I'm not just going to leave you hanging with press through the legs. But as we're approaching the end of the warm up, I thought I might as well stop talking and get prepared for the switch into 26. Oh, yes, watch, I am rowing. Come on. One of these days I'll start it before I start rowing. One of these days. Okay, so about six more strokes. Oh wait, about three more strokes from this one coming now. So we're gonna go up to 26 strokes per minute from this stroke here. Okay, so speed up. And your pace, I want that to be 2K plus 15. If you're listening to me and following what I say. Oh, I'm bouncing up and down between 25 and 26 right now. Try and hold a steady 26. There we go. So like I said, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. It may be that you're just using this video to, as a accompaniment to a one hour test. Because frankly, an episode of Breaking Bad isn't ideal for doing a one hour test. The best to think about rowing Not about a TV show. So hopefully you've hit your pace properly. You feel comfortable at this stroke rate as well. I mean, 2K plus 15 is for anything under, I don't know, 6k maybe quite a light pace feels quite easy in 2k plus 15 I'd usually be doing about 22 strokes a minute if I was doing 2k training and if I was doing 26 I'd be doing 2k plus 9 but, as we're going for an hour, or well, 50 minutes, 
that pace calculation all gets changed. At least from a training perspective. I mean, if you can hold 2K plus nine for your time trial, you'll be doing well, so that's what you want to aim for. But for a mid-tier training session, 2K plus 15 with power 10s is bang on if you ask me. Now what do I mean by power 10s? I mean 10 strokes still at 26 strokes per minute. But I want you to lay in the power from your legs and a strong finish with your arms as well. So 10 strokes, you'll probably, hopefully speed up by about 10 seconds maybe. I'll tell you what I manage. Not that that makes any difference to you, but I'll give you an indication. And that's what's gonna mix up this session from just being a rather simple, higher rate, easy pace one. So, okay, so in 50 seconds, we're gonna go into our first power 10 set. Then we go straight back into 26 strokes a minute and 2k plus 15. So remember the entire session remains at 26 now until we hit the five minute cooldown. So in 15 seconds now, get yourself ready. Okay. So, one more stroke. Let's go, 10 strokes. Should really hear the machine screaming. Three strokes to go. One, two, three. Good job. And then back down to 2K plus 15. For info, my guess was bang on, but 10 seconds faster, so 2K plus five. You probably feel your legs just feel a little bit, boy, what just happened? But. Use the next four minutes to just keep rowing through it. Set yourself up for the next one. Now remember, your power all, well, around about 60% of it anyway, comes from the legs. Especially, uh, pace like this it does but then don't forget the backswing which helps add speed in and obviously that final finish with the arms but you'll find you'll notice the biggest pace increase on these power tens come from that big push with your legs. Ah, I said push again. Ah, push, press. You get what I mean.
Now, I'll talk more technique once I get through the next power 10, but when we hit the next one, really try and think about your body angle as you hit that drive at the front. Wait to be leaning in for as long as possible. Even if it feels uncomfortable, but you can make sure to initiate the drive in a forward lean. That's at least better than, hang on, I'll try and work out how to do it, than lifting your shoulders and starting in a backward position like this. Don't want to do this. You're losing loads of potential power from that transfer of your upper body going from one o'clock to 11 o'clock. Ideally, you keep that forward lean for as long as possible through the strokes. Only leaning back with your body as your legs almost finish the drive. But it can be quite hard to get that feeling right, so try to concentrate for now on at least initiating the drive in a forward lean. Then you can worry about how long you hold it after that. I'll talk more about this once we've got through the next power 10, which is coming up in 30 seconds. This will be two of 10. This is gonna fly by today with these power 10s. Four strokes maybe. One, two, three, yeah. One more. Power tens, here we go. Really stick in that pressure. Three, two, one. Uh, I hope. And back up to 26, or remaining at 26, plus 15. So just ease off the pressure with your legs. And how hard you're finishing with a handle. That should be all it takes for you to speed up and then for you to slow down again. So, the funny thing about these power tens is that you enter like a time machine where the five minutes in between, or at least the four, 420 maybe, 440. See, maths again, 440. In between each set, gets, feels shorter and shorter as the sequence moves on and then the 20 seconds you spend doing them feels longer and longer. Kind of relativity, maybe not Einstein's relativity, but the perception of time all gets twisted through this session. However, as an overall, the session does fly by. I mean, we're closing in on 20 minutes gone. And I haven't even told you about my dinner plans or 
the last film I watched. How amazing. Van Halen are. Dead Mouse. So, back to the back. Let's just close this one off. So, one o'clock position at the front. Trying to hold that at least as you drive with the legs, but hopefully for as long as possible. Then you swing back into an 11 o'clock lean at the back. Ideally, not more. You'll see many, 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 many rowers who will do something like wood sound effects oh I'll speed up again which not only oh I'm stopping doing that has the exaggerated lean in the back but the handle finishes kind of let's see yeah above my nipples <laughs> I said nipples and a weird flicky thing that I do with my wrists in order to finish because I end up using my forearms instead of my lats and google the difference between forearms and your lats and you'll see what one the bigger muscle is and what one you're best to adopt in the rowing stroke I suggest the lats anyway and then once you're from the 11 at the back lean forwards again into the one but we'll talk about that next because we've got another power 10 coming up already okay one two three one more stroke now I'm going to hit power ten so here we go ten nine eight seven six five four three two one there you go that's one way to make sure I didn't lose count this time not that I don't think I lost count the first two times but maybe I did if so I'll try and remember to do a countdown from now on so for past 20 minutes gone well done it should now start to feel more like you're in the mid to your territory than the first 15 minutes that felt like they were bottom to your territory that's good that's how it's supposed to feel especially if you're continuing to hold 2k plus 15 at 26 strokes a minute and what you'll find is coming out the back of these 10 power strokes you will feel it's <coughs> tougher like from an effort scale you'll have jumped from like 6 to 8 temporarily but then by now you should kind of be back down at 6 maybe 7 but you shouldn't feel like the effort level that you're at as you come out of the power 10s should be anywhere near what you're feeling now <clears throat> oh. 
so it didn't quite close off the back, I'm afraid. A couple more things to say about it. Which is, you want to get back into that forward lean quite quickly after the finish. So that your slide back up the rail is all done in that forward lean. You're not doing this and then moving. Oh. Speed up a bit, sorry. Pace wise, I lost it. There we go. Back in at 26. It's the danger of keeping up with me for timing. And then I start to show you the wrong thing. Because the fact is, doing it the wrong way like I just showed, one of the downsides is that it makes it harder to hit these higher stroke rates. Well, at 26 is high, but it's higher than 18. Um, so if you're struggling to do a high stroke rate, just consider what's going on with your back. Because once I get my back forward, all I have to do is bend my knees and I slide up to the front again. There's no muscles apart from my knees involved in the recovery once my arms are forward and my back is forward. Whereas the wrong way I just showed you, you have to use your hip flexors, your stomach muscles, your lower back, loads of muscles at the same time, all of which completely tires you out. What's that? Exercise minutes for the day done. All right. 20 seconds to go. And then we're going to have our fourth power 10. Is it four? Hang on, I'll do the maths in a second. Okay, two strokes. One more. Here we go. 10. Nice and powerful. 9. Press the legs. 8. 7. Don't forget to finish with your arms. 6. 5. 4. 3. And your back swing. 2. 2. Last one. There we go. Back to plus 15 again. You know, it could be quite possible that I'm developing a stitch. Which is weird. I don't think I've had a stitch since I was 14. It'll be the higher rate and constantly talking and probably turning to camera quite a lot as well. But Let's hope it clears up. So, I mentioned the importance of your arms in the last one. Not only in helping your recovery by getting them over your knees to help you slide forwards, but your arms aren't just about this finish by the end of the stroke. They're also the conduit of power from your legs. So what you need to do is preserve the amount of power you have at the finish by not bending your arms too soon. For instance, if I start this stroke like this, by the time I come to the finish, I've got about a quarter of my arms to play with, okay? Whereas, if my arms are straight, I have the whole gamut 
to pull in and finish. <coughs> so that's reason one why you don't grab at the front and fight the flywheel. Urgh. Reason two is chances are you're swinging your back too quickly at the same time, so you're like this. Okay, which we've already talked about. And number three, the actual leg drive itself will suffer because if you bend your elbows too early, you'll be fighting against the power as it goes through your body and tries to get into the flywheel through the handle. Your muscles will be soaking up lots of the energy. Whereas, if your arms are straight and with a elbow rotation pointing slightly downwards to protect your shoulders, the power from your legs will travel up through a engaged core please and fire your posterior chain into the handle just basically through tendons and ligaments so you don't use any muscle power from your arms at the start of the stroke you only use your muscles here as you pull in the handle to your chest so push, pull push, pull or press, pull don't confuse the press with the pull no peepees <laughs> something was scatological for a while ok, 20 seconds to go and we'll be halfway there and hitting our next power 10 right. 3 2 1 here we go 10 really putting the power 9 8 I want to hear that machine scream 6 5 4 3 2 1 Whew. It's certainly getting tougher to do now Try not to ease off your power 10s or your 2k plus 15 If you can hold it It'll be a much better training session However You're better To maybe dump Two seconds in your split On the power 10s Than you are on the plus 15 So If you're Rowing at Two minutes For the plus 15 And you have been doing 150 for the power 10s I'll accept 152 right now for your power 10s but I won't accept any slower than 2 minutes it's not like I'm there I can't actually see you rowing so but the only person you're cheating if you back off both ends is yourself this is meant to be a mid tier workout which means you're meant to find it tough by the very definition this is a hard session the bottom tier ones are easy workouts i.e. you get a workout but it feels easy or relatively easy hence the 5 out of 10 effort scale for bottom tiers 
But then the mid tiers are kind of between six and eight because they start to feel hard. And then the top tiers are kind of eight, nine, ten. And if you're watching Spinal Tap, 11. <clears throat> Goes all the way to 11, man. Anyway, so don't shy off if it feels hard. If anything, <clears throat> not that I want to turn this on to me, but I'm talking to you the whole way through this. And I'm holding pace for both the plus 15 and the power 10s are still hanging around 10 seconds faster than that. And I'm talking to you. You're not. Unless you're shouting at me, telling me to shut up. Shut up, you daft Scotsman. I'm trying to roll here. <clears throat> Although, I didn't have to take the odd break. Like the past 10 seconds. Fully to think about what to talk about next. <clears throat> I haven't really covered the arms fully, but I want you to drive with straight arms and then get back to straight arms as quickly as possible and it helps if you think about the speed you pull in at is the speed you push out at woof 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 that way you get the rhythm of the stroke and like I always say the rowing stroke it's all about rhythm. It's all about dancing with the machine. <laughs> You're trying to tell it you love it. <laughs> okay, two strokes. One more. Power of tens coming up. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Listen to the flywheel accelerate. Five, four, three, two, last one, and back to plus 15. Good job. Stay with me here. Don't back off the plus 15. So let's continue the rhythm thing. is I mean after you've done this row come back and watch me and you'll see there's never a point where I stop so you will see some rowers go like that I don't really suggest that The fluid motion is almost, if you want to be really cheesy, kind of like Tai Chi. Everything's always in motion. The minute something is slamming to a halt, you have power leaks all over the place, or a risk of injury. So you should Get into the front, get your shins to vertical, let that moment at vertical feel like a spring coiling up, and then the minute you're at vertical, press out with your legs. Don't hold it, just reverse the motion. Same at the back, pull in, push out. The moment you stop, you're starting to put 
too much potential energy <coughs> into your body that it's not really wanting to accept. This curled spring at the front just wants to release again. If you hold it, not only do you risk injury, you also risk your butt scooting back, which I think is my problem. Because you're the seat just wants to go backwards again because of that coiled up power. And it's also why I don't recommend putting a resistance band across the rail to stop you at the vertical point. Because all that happens is you hit it here, the entire system bounces to a halt, causing not only potential injury, but also the seat to go bouncing back. So if you want to find that point where your shins are vertical, in between rows, and then just put like a post-it note or a piece of tape around the rail where that point is. And then, every time you hit it, you'll feel a little click. You won't stop. You'll just get a little sensation through your butt telling you you've gone far enough. Or telling you you didn't go far enough. But of course, if you're constantly not getting far enough, it could be your flexibility. So move it back a little bit. So you're not quite a vertical, but you have to compress a little bit more than you're used to in order to hit it. And then move it a bit further forwards, yada, yada, yada. Right, here we go in 10 seconds with the next power tens. Oh, one more stroke. Here we go, power tens. 10, 9, 8, 7, keep that forward lean. 6, 5, strong finish with the arms. 4, 3, 2, last one. 1, good job. Back off to plus 15. That's 40 minutes down. Only got 20 minutes to go, of which only 15 are at this pace. And then we slow down after the last power attempts to a cool down. So, although I said five minute cool down, it's closer to four minutes 40. I hope you forgive me. But it's more important that you do that final set of power tens than it is that you get an extra 20 seconds cool down. Because you could always just continue yourself anyway. I usually go on a bit at the end, so even when I stop, you can keep on cooling down. By on a bit, I mean talk. Separation anxiety. Can't say goodbye to you. I'm replacing all the stitches gone. Don't know when it went. So we've got three more power tens to do. So we've already done seven. It doesn't feel like it, does it? <clears throat> now, a couple of finer points about technique that don't really cover that often. 
first one handle height where should you start where should you finish well take it from the finish and most people will suggest kind of just underneath your bra strap or just underneath your sternum or heart rate monitor if you're wearing one and then as you release the handle just try and make it go in a straight line you don't have to worry about tapping down like an on the water rower just straight line backs and forwards the thing about tapping down is if you go too low the temptation to lift your shoulders and lose your backswing but this is really high whereas if you're just going backwards and forwards on the same plane you're more likely to hold your body position You can see I've got a piece of tape marked at the front of the machine. That's to give me a guide of where I really want the chain to pass through, ideally on the drive and the recovery. Maybe it goes a bit low, but it's better than scraping it off the bottom of the machine. And then elbows are up to you. Some people, like me, say elbows straight through, let the lats do the work. Others, a lot of on the water rowers, want your elbows out. Like this, out. But I get no pace when I do that. So I stick to wrists flat, elbows through. Okay. Four more strokes. Two. Three. Four. Here we go, another power of ten. Ten. Nine. Come on. Eight. Seven. Don't let your legs stop you. Six. From pressing. Five. Four. Three. Good solid press with the legs. Two. Last one. One, there we go. 15 minutes to go. Well, 14 and a half actually. Actually, nine and a half. No, oh. oh, whatever. Can't do the maths. <clears throat> but we're almost there. The other thing, nice, relaxed hands. Fingers as hooks over the handle rather than choking it. That way you let air circulate around your palms, hopefully reducing just how sweaty they get, which can cause blisters and basic discomfort. Then chin, I'm not great at this one, but try to keep your chin neutral. So don't go up in the air and then down, uh, up in the air and down. Not only is it very likely to give you motion sickness, that chin down at the end, here, really promotes a rounded back. Now look at me now. <laughs> it completely collapses my back. Whereas, keeping a nice neutral chin, I'm not saying I've got the greatest back, but it's at least not doing that rounded collapse thing. So a nice 
neutral chin. Think about your head scraping along a low ceiling. That helps give you the powerful back. You also need kind of like you're sitting on a carrot that's stuck up your butt. So you have to keep a powerful erect back which is one of the reasons I've got this funky seat pad because it feels just like that I kind of got used to this seat pad now still not done a comparison of with or without it in terms of performance but as long as I use it regularly enough I think it does help with butt pain the problem is if you have a week off when you come back it doesn't have hit your hamstrings first Whew. almost there so I'm certainly towards the top end of mid now if I was in top I wouldn't be talking to you but I'm definitely clawing at the uh, ceiling of mid in the basement at the top let's see what happens in the next five minutes Oh. 30 seconds until our second last power 10 don't ease off you've only got two of them to go and then it's the cool down right one two three two one here we go ten nine eight seven keep up with me six five four three two here we go last one one right four and a half minutes the 2k plus 15 then one more power 10 and then it's the cool down well done I'm saying well done now because there's no way you're stopping now so close to the finish of course it's a bit late to say it but a workout like this really does, does need you to be properly hydrated if you end up dehydrated 15 minutes into this it will be awful for the rest of it almost to the point that you should stop but if you're dehydrated now there's only a few more minutes of actual rowing left so you'll get through that and even if you have to stop as you hit the cool down to take a drink that's fine oh. didn't really talk about diet today apart from I'll say this so I'm at the end of a four week cycle where I've been very strict about calorie intake so using a calorie calculator working out in order 
to comfortably lose weight, I need to eat only 1800 calories a day. And then, although exercise adds to that allowance, I'm not doing a like for like. So if I burn off 600 calories a day, I'll only allow 400 to be re-eaten. <laughs> Mostly because I would have burnt 100 calories just sitting playing computer games. So instantly strike off 100 calories and then the other 100 are because I don't trust the calculation of food intake and energy output. So as long as I don't feel starved, that's what I've been doing. Started out beginning of week one at 82 and a half kilograms, can you believe it? Weighed myself this morning. Here's what, three days, four days before weigh-in and I'm 78 and a half. So I've lost four kilograms, which isn't bad. However, as much as I'd love to say it's just a calorie thing, it's not. It's a not drinking alcohol thing. I worked out on a Saturday and Sunday night, I'd be taking in about two and a half thousand calories through beer, wine, Jack Daniels. So by cutting all that out, didn't even need to think about what I was eating throughout the day. As long as I don't eat cake and biscuits too much. And I mean that, still allowing myself like a chocolate digestive every day. Right, that's the end of that. So in five strokes, we have our last power 10. Two more, one more. Here we go, last time. Give it everything. Get back down to 2K plus five. Two more. Last one. There you go. Right. And let's paddle down to 18. Like I said, if you have to quickly stop to have a drink, if you're really dehydrated, do it. This warm up will still be going 20 seconds after you've had a drink. For reference, I'm 2K plus 35 right now, just easing down. If we were doing a shorter cool down, I'd be going faster. I'd probably be 2K plus like 25 or something if it was only a two minute cool down. But because we have the time to let our bodies ease down, we can start slower in the cool down. Trust me. That said, if you're absolutely gasping right now and you feel going faster than 18 strokes a minute and faster pace than 2K plus 35, it's up to you. You go ahead and do it. It's your body, you know what's going on in your system. I'm all the way on the other end of YouTube. I'm stuck in a box in the middle of the internet somewhere. I'm trying to get out. Help me, help me, I'm stuck on the internet. Here's a good tip. Take a 
backs of your face or photocopy of your face more like and email it to someone like you're kind of stuck in a in the photocopier and say help I'm stuck in the internet they'll find it so funny trust me <laughs> oh, right so we're closing in on two minutes to go in this cooldown hope you enjoyed this 60 minute row of which there's still two minutes to go so if you're still doing a 60 minute time trial or event sorry then keep going you've got two minutes to go it's almost over keep going but if you're cooling down with me I hope you enjoyed today's session definitely for me anyway didn't quite claw its way into a top but it was towards the top of a mid interval so it was more like a seven and a half to eight than it was a seven so I'm gently slowing down now because we're coming to the last minute and a half remember I've got loads of videos on my channel I've got the training plan I've got a couple of tips for technique and things I'm going to start recording a few more technique tips basically the things I go through during the row but it's standalone videos um, remember rowalong.com is the website indoorrowinginfo.com is the website for everything about indoor rowing and if you're anywhere near August 2020 when you watch this then in a few days time I'm kicking off the Row 555 online indoor rowing competition so go to row555.com or row555.com to find out more about that everybody's welcome category winners get a medal but anybody who enters has a chance to win the profits or a share of the profits I'm not doing this for money I'm doing this to try and get people rowing to be honest so you might not be strong enough to win but all you're missing out on is a medal just taking part you could win 50 quid depends on how many people enter it can even be 100 pounds depending on the numbers I get anyway that's my wee thing I'm doing right now so right. one more stroke after this last stroke Ooh. and we can just slide her into neutral if you just completed a full 60 minute tough event well done um, ping me a note of how far you've, you've gone I think my PB is like 16,100 for a 60 minute um, but yeah that's what I've done for the day I hope you enjoyed today's one hour session um, it certainly is a rather moist one for me so hopefully it was a really good workout for you um, yeah and if you want to subscribe whatever um, click things so that you get notifications that I've sent put up a video then I'd love it if you want to leave a comment I'd love that too today hey let's I'll just do some self-promotion eh do hashtag row 555 okay you might as well try and help this competition along by using that as the, the hashtag so just to let me know you got this far through it um hashtag row 555 and then leave me a wee comment saying how much you enjoyed or didn't enjoy my wee row and my wee chat for an hour okay thank you so much for coming and watching my video um stay safe be well and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye